Welcome back, everyone. Toysh is here, and I'm back yet again because I'm finally home from San Diego Comic Con 2023. What a great time it was! Saw a lot of old friends, uh, a lot of new friends, right? That's always fun, but it was really just a nice, solid convention. Yes, there are reveals up the yin yang. Of course, that's what we are going to be talking about today. Keep in mind, this was pretty crazy, just to kind of go off topic. For those not in the know, for everyone at the show, you know exactly what I'm talking about. They stacked basically Masters of the Universe, Mattel, right? Then right after that was McFarlane Toys and then Hasbro's Marvel Legends. So it was an overlap of the first two by 15 minutes each. So as I'm covering the convention, I'm having to duck out roughly 10 to 15 minutes early before the wrap of the initial panel. So at the very end of this video, you will see a couple images and you'll see the big reveal that Todd actually did that, uh, I do apologize, that didn't have the slides at the time, but I will say that uh, they're pretty solid reveals. You might be interested, right? That would be kind of cool. So, we're going to go ahead and jump right into it. So, got into the McFarlane Toys panel. It was packed. It's a packed panel. It had Todd McFarlane, some of the awesome dudes from the McFarlane Toys team, and Jim Fletcher. If you don't know Jim Fletcher, he's from DC Direct. He's been a DC guy for years and years. Crazy awesome dude. Really nice guy. So, he took us through everything. Now, really quick, before we get to DC Multiverse, I will briefly touch on everything they showed. So they did show Blizzard Entertainment will be partnering with McFarlane Toys, we've sort of known that, to do World of Warcraft and Diablo, right? So Diablo 4, we will see 6-inch PVC statues. That's how they're going to go with these for the time being. There will be blind box elements. They will come with multiple weapons and attachments. So they're really trying to offer that customizable sort of experience, which you tell me, right, for all you World of Warcraft fans out there, is that your sort of deal? Six-inch customizable posed PVC statues. That's what they're going to be going for for World of Warcraft. Over on Diablo 4 with McFarlane Toys, they will have six-inch customizable posed PVC statues as well. So kind of sort of the same thing, right? They didn't go into how many accessories and yada yada. But this sure looks interesting. It's a 12-inch ultra-detailed posed figure. And, and this weird-looking thing is called the Blood Bishop. Again, as I've always said, in the 90s and the Spawn and everything else, McFarlane Toys, uh, their sweet spot is always monsters and weird demonic creatures and everything else that comes from DC Multiverse, Spawn, or any of the video games, anime, and whatnot that they make toys for. Now, they are going to be continuing on with their Movie Maniacs line. For those of you in the know, Movie Maniacs has been a McFarlane staple for years and years. They were a little bit more, quote-unquote, for that time period, action figure right? Now they've basically moved into just full-on pre-posed statues. So... They're not exactly my cup of tea, but they will be going forward with the Matrix. So you'll see Neo and Trinity, and then they're also going to do Pennywise from the new It movies that came out in recent years. So that will be around fall 2023. Then they're going to be tackling Jumanji, which is interesting. I actually enjoyed both movies. I think they're pretty good. Do I want figures based off them? No, no, it's, it's not my thing, but... For those of you out there, it might be your thing. So they'll be having Smolder, Ruby, Mouse, and Shelly, which is kind of funny, right? So you have Smolder, you get the idea. Super detailed, uh, Black Adam, basically, right? <laughs> the Rock. So experience these coming soon, fall 2023 as well. And when I say subject to change, you know how that kind of goes in and around, yada, yada. It might be earlier, it might be later. Now, this could be a big reveal for some of you out there that are more into the McFarlane sports. They did a ton of sports figures back in the day, but they announced they're going to be doing the NHL, NHLPA with McFarlane Toys. They didn't have 
photos of the figures on slides when they were doing the whole shebang here but they did put them up on the table and then luckily they zoomed in on the camera so you could see all the different players that are coming i'm not going to even pretend that i am a hockey fan or know any of these people mighty ducks that's a hockey team that i know right pat myself on the back for that one also they will be doing nfl nfl pa with mcfarland toys as well they didn't show anything off for that but more on these coming soon so we'll probably see some instances of these hitting store shelves from now until the end of the year somewhere in between now they did go over demon slayer again not my cup of tea but a lot of you out there really seem to be gravitating towards these the five inch articulated action figures that range from 10 bucks you'll see them around fall 2023 I'm, again, much like hockey, not going to even pretend I know anything about this anime. I've heard it's really good, but again, <laughs> I, I, I don't have enough time to watch anime these days, right? Then also, they will be having a 5-inch deluxe action figure set, $14.99, $15, and it will come with Tanjiro with Water Dragon accessories. So you get a little something-something with your figure, right? We all like that. Powers and accessories, weapons galore. We love that as action figure collectors. In the 7-inch realm for Demon Slayer, all four of these figures, 25 bucks a pop. Should be seeing them in around fall 2023. I'm looking forward to the fall. If you're in California, you know what I'm talking about. I know I was in New York uh, about a week and a half ago now. It was equally as hot. The humidity is ridiculous. But just in SoCal, my God. I'm already sick of the heat, so you can comment below if, you, if you're if you feeling the heat. I, I don't do well on heat. I, I like seasons, right? Or at least you got to be by the beach, water in general, if you're going to have this much heat. 12-inch statues for Demon Slayer. It's going to be that whole, like the DC multiverse, the mega figure statue sort of deal, 40 bucks. And again, it's the pig mask guy <laughs> with the swords. You can fill me in down below. Should I check out Demon Slayer? Is it good? And it, from a guy who doesn't really care for anime. I'm sorry, but you, you got to tell me. If it's good, uh, maybe I'll give it a gander. Anyways, DC Multiverse, which I'm sure you guys are all here for because we have a lot of fun talking about DC Multiverse, as it seems. Now, I did get to go to the preview night McFarlane party that they had before the general opening of Comic-Con. It was a really nice spread. They had some nice food. It was up on top of a giant high-rise overlook San Diego. Got to see some packaged up new product right most of it was just stuff we've already seen but it's nice to see the newer coming stuff which is actually starting to hit store shelves as of san diego comic-con like doomsday and whatnot it's nice to see them on display get a little bit of a, a better idea of things in particular i have looked at most of these figures in one way or another right depending on if it's a repaint or not robin Coming soon, the Nightfall Batman is pretty good. Batman is Two-Face. You get the idea. Superman, it's not my cup of tea. Riddler, however, for these figures, looks awesome. Really stoked on him. I think he looks really good. I have videos up if you want to talk about all of these now. They'll go into more details. At this particular preview party, right, they had a boxed version of the black and gray Hush Batman. Here's the barcode. Right, doing you a solid, so when they start to hit store shelves, you are already on top of things. Next up is the Jim Gordon Batman, which I have one from Mattel. It was really cool. It came with the whole uh, robot suit that looked like Chappie. Remember that movie? Right, so that's pretty cool. I can go either way with this, to be honest with you. It's not really something that I'm into. I actually like the robot a whole heck of a lot better, to be honest with you. And as far as a new figure from a relatively new comic book, Dark Knights of Steel, we will see the Knight Armor Batman. Again, these are always seeming to be based off of comic books, right? Recent comics and whatnot. And when I see these types of figures, I immediately just think of Legends of the Dark Knight, Legends of Batman. It's fun. Is this for me? Mm, I say this now, seeing the render going, eh, but maybe once I see it in hand, I'll have a different opinion now some gold label actions are coming right you got all four of these figures we've already seen Catman be revealed he ended up being a mcfarland store exclusive so you can grab him online you can even get him now if you like 
Upcoming gold label exclusives will include Black Lightning, which that totally works for me. I really, really dig that costume. The more classic sort of deal, that's what I want to see when it comes to my DC comic. That's where I live. I say this all the time. But just to reiterate, it, it's just, it makes it fun, right? Now, keep in mind, this might be subject to change, but as of right now, Black Lightning should be a Walmart exclusive. So just keep that in mind. Again, when you says gold label, it just depends on which store is getting them, but gold label means that particular store's exclusive. Moving on, we have from DC vs. Vampires... We have Green Lantern, which I really wish... See, this is still utilizing that Hal Jordan body. I would have really preferred them retool that, put that on the more Blue Beetle, Booster Gold, really just normal-looking body. I think that would fit Green Lantern, Green Lanterns in general, very well, right? So that would be kind of cool. Because it's a vampire, we've all seen the vampires so far with DC vs. Vampires, so he will be a Walmart exclusive. Walmart loves them vampires. Because Supergirl is red, but she's also blue, but you could say she's got a lot more red than blue. Can you guess the gold label on this one? Uh, yes, she will be a Target store exclusive. And then, of course... Like I said, Catman, which you can grab now on the McFarland store. Again, all of that could be subject to change, because sometimes, right? But I have it on good authority. Uh, that That's the stores that we should see each of those individual figures. Moving on, we have uh, some more exclusives news, right? The ones that we've already seen. So, yes, of course, store exclusives. If... You look at it at face value, you go, man, that's a, that's a lot of exclusives. Always doing exclusives. Well, believe it or not, when you do these short-run exclusives, they help pay the bills and pave the way for figures that you would not normally see, like Catman. Okay? So always think of it that way. As much as we, even on my channel, hey, oh, you know, why are they doing this one? Why are they doing this one? Well, there are people out there that love them. There are people out there that love the Joker Eyes stuff. Trust me on that. I met a few of them at SDCC. Great to meet you guys. But let me tell you, it, it's all a bit of a give and take. You don't have to collect everything. But when you hit that sweet spot of a figure, just think back. Yeah, it's because someone out there bought the Jokerized Joker. <laughs> so that's pretty cool if you think about it that way. But what's a pretty cool reveal in and of itself? Batman and Robin will be getting the DC Multiverse treatment. Now, I'm going to be 100% honest with you. When Batman and Robin came out, that was that kid that went, nope, this does not work for me. They would never do this in the comic books. Changed my ways, though. It's a bit of a, a nostalgic turn now, right? You think back and you go, oh, yeah. George Clooney was Batman for a time there, right? It's a giant action figure commercial if you've never seen some of the documentaries on it. But the initial lineup will be George Clooney as Batman. Looks pretty good, right? You got that whole Batman six-pack coming out. So... If you don't want to go for this wave, he will be in that six-pack as well. Pretty nifty looking figure, I will say, clad and all back. And if the renders are correct, yeah, it looks like George Clooney under the mask, let's be honest. Next up will be Poison Ivy, Uma Thurman. She looks pretty good. Looks pretty dang good. I got to give it to him. Maybe a little bit more Uma in the face, I will just say. But the reds, the greens, for as much as I honestly care about this movie, no, nah, we're, we're, we're good. Trust me on that. Alicia Silverstone, the Batgirl from Batman and Robin, is the third figure. She looks pretty good. Much like Uma, I'll say she's got the general look down. Would I immediately say that's Alicia Silverstone? Maybe a couple tweaks here and there, right? Just to get it a little bit more on model. And then, of course, you got Chris O'Donnell as Robin, or Nightwing, kind of, sort of, right? Kind of took on that costume while calling himself Robin. It was all in the name, but Nightwing is a little bit more fitting, right? But, yeah, I would say that's definitely Chris O'Donnell, so that's pretty cool. So you got all four figures, which is pretty nice, right? But what would be a collect-to-build wave without the actual collect-to-build figure, which... I thought they were totally going to say Bane. It's Mr. Freeze. Arnold Schwarzenegger himself. He looks pretty good. I got to give it to him, right? Nice ice armor. <laughs> you really can't go wrong with the ice puns, right? They're pretty cool. I would say, for the most part, that head sculpt looks like 
Arnold Schwarzenegger. It does remain to be seen, which I'm really hoping he comes with his ice gun, right? That's kind of like an integral part to his character, especially from the movie. Maybe a giant diamond, couple diamonds, something like that. That would be nice to see. But in the general totality of what they originally showed from this panel, you got all five figures and we will see more updates coming soon. Now, Moving on, McFarlane Collector Edition. Again, I'm not going to go into it here. I have a full video on if you want to hear all my thoughts for Wave 1. Now, I did speak with them at the pre-party event, and I told them my honest thoughts, and, I, and they were well aware of it. <laughs> and they sort of agree. They, you know, they, in so many ways, they're in the business to sell figures, but I very much relayed. I said, look at the comments. Look at what people are saying. Wave 1 did not come across like something amazing, right? Especially at the price point. So, in all good news, they are very aware of Wave 1, and subsequently, hopefully, we'll be seeing a, a bit of a, a change-up for the later waves, like Wave 2 here, which actually looks pretty good. Now, they did say they're going to come with accessories and hands, and I did talk to them about the trading card. I said... Lose a trading card stand. It's up to them. They make these things, right? But they know if they're selling or not when you vote with your dollar. So that's just a little bit of a heads up. The trading card thing is not worth the money. I want to see accessories and hands and heads and all that sort of jazz. Now, Firestorm. Looking pretty darn cool. I'm so glad we're getting a classic look for Firestorm, right? I want to call him Ronnie, but you get the idea. It's a very classic look for Firestorm. Totally digging that. Nice colors, everything else, not too overly detailed. I would say with the hands and such, try to circulate new hands. Don't always do the same hands with everybody, you know, the point hands and the out. You know what I mean? Like, let's get some fire effects and whatnot. Hopefully, those are definitely packed in the box. Hawkman, which looks pretty darn cool. He looks. A little bit total justice right? It's kind of cool to see a little Kenner-inspired comic books and whatnot. I think he looks pretty darn good, especially with those wings. Hopefully we get some articulation and whatnot. This was not a situation at this point during the convention where we could have talked about anything, right? But I will say, wait for them to really introduce and show these off better as time moves on, as we get later on in the year. And then the third figure will be a Sinestro Core. Sinestro, which looks pretty good. Now, ideally, Sinestro to me is in the blues and the blacks, right? With the big forehead, I like that version of Sinestro. This one has grown on me. I think it's been around long enough to kind of think of Sinestro in these colors now. So I'm good either way. If later down the road they want to do a variant, do the whole original costume, maybe give him a different head portrait, that would be really cool. Hopefully he's got some yellow constructs and whatnot to him, extra hands less of the trading card stands and all that jazz you know what i'm saying but overall if this be wave two and they really want to razzle dazzle the box i'm totally down for that moving on mcfarland toys digital this is where we're gonna have to agree to disagree and i think a lot of you out there are gonna gonna roll your eyes just as much as i did and pretty much just as much as the crowd kind of did when they announced this at the panel they're going again with the NFTs, okay? Now, this will be a quarter four 2023 release, so more fallish into winter, right? Quarter four, usually October, November, December, somewhere around that time frame. But we're finally going to be getting a pre-Flashpoint Wonder Woman, which I'm totally stoked on, and the crowd went wild, and it just looks great. So I'm stoked on that, finally, right? Hopefully, she comes with a lot of Wonder Woman parts, like a lasso of truth. That would be cool. A sword, a shield, something like that to that effect. But the lasso is very integral with some extra hands, maybe some extra head portraits. That would be wild to see. They've really kind of started to tease us here and there like with the Flash Target exclusive. So I would like to see that for Diana. Now, when they were talking about this, I did get some clarification. They had mentioned that there's going to be and the, the NFT part will be digital skins, basically. So you're going to find this figure at mass retail. We'll just say the NFT element will provide some skins within the NFT, right? As best as I can really explain this. But you'll get a classic Wonder Woman skin. 
And then in this NFT wave, <laughs> you can get Batman and Aquaman as well. If you buy all three figures, you get Starro. Is it a real Starro, a physical Starro? No, it's a digital Starro. It doesn't exist. It's not real. But hey, if you are into that type of thing, have at it. But for me, Wonder Woman is great. The only difference with the Batman is that uh, he's got a little bit of a blue-gray variant to him. So he's a little bit different. He's still got the purple on the underside of the cape. But the Aquaman, perhaps a little bit more brighter type orange to the green, remains to be seen, right? But uh, yeah, it's basically the same Arthur Curry figure that we got prior to the recent Aquaman page punchers wave. Now, they did briefly touch on Blue Beetle. I don't know if you've seen the new trailer just yet. I'm very excited for that movie. I'm actually stoked. No thoughts going in. I'm going in there just like, press me or not. It's up to you, DC Comics movies. But if you are interested in these figures, I have a full video up looking at the entire McFarlane Toys collection for the movie. Every single figure includes the statue. What it doesn't include is the recent reveal of this larger 12-inch resin statue. This falls more into the DC Direct line, right? So it's not going to be as heavily influenced by, let's say, McFarlane Toys. It's kind of McFarlane Toys X DC Directs, but it's a large statue. I saw this in person. It does look great. If you're a Blue Beetle fan, it looks awesome. It's going to cost a pretty penny. Those statues are not cheap. Just going to let you know. But again, if you are a fan of Blue Beetle, you can check that out. Or if you're a fan of the action figures, you can check out my video now. Moving on, I'm very excited. I think Batman 66 is my favorite thing that McFarlane Toys is honestly doing because they're so consistent with it. I know a lot of people are going to say, oh, I don't care for the articulation. Well, I sure do, and I love the classicness of it. It just looks great. Now, before they've utilized nothing but Batman classic TV series characters, right? Well, they're going to kind of meld into the animated property for the Batman 66 series, the comic book, right? Which we've already seen with Batgirl and now Two-Face. And they're going to see a couple re-releases. So if you wanted to catch up, maybe you missed a few, maybe you jumped into the line a little bit late. We're going to get Batman and Unmasked Dick Grayson Robin. So those will be coming back, right? Then we're going to see Superman, which is pretty cool. Again, Superman hails from the Batman 66 comic books. I think he looks pretty cool. These are no longer a Target Store exclusive. These are going to be available everywhere. So that offers a little bit more to people, maybe inside the U.S., outside the U.S., and whatnot. You have Robot Batman, which looks fantastic. Totally wackadoo. Wasn't expecting that. When I first saw this image, I was like, wow, that's that's cool. That's definitely interesting. But I got to tell you, the one that, pff, hands down, the one that I absolutely want, even more than Superman, Lord Deathman. That is awesome. If you're not familiar with the Japanese comics, Batman and Robin, Batman 66, kind of like all the tie-ins, Topps comics and whatnot, Lord Deathman, he looks rocking. I am so stoked to be getting a Batman 66 version of Lord Death Man, and then for some reason they're going to re-release the masked version of Joker. Go figure, right, on that one. But, like I said, all of these figures are coming out in and around fall 2023, so get ready for that. Over on the Superpowers Avenue, which again, I'm having a lot of fun with. I'm going to be honest with you, I can't say I'm all too stoked with some of the reveals, but some of them are definite standouts. We're going to be getting Batman, Superman, Robin, and... A very cool 90s Nightwing. So definitely dig that. So first and foremost, we'll be getting Batman. Batman looking like Batman Returns, especially with the belt. Maybe more of a Michael Keaton. Kind of sort of the Troika suit when they started implementing that. But it depends on the fins and on the gloves and the boots and whatnot. Let, let's go more Batman Returns, Batman. We got Superman in a uh, more updated costume, newer comics. Again, doesn't do much for me. They're really putting out a lot of Batmans and Supermans already. You know what I mean? I wish they would kind of space those out a little bit more. I'm really not going to complain about this Robin, though. Tim Drake. Anytime you want to do a cool 90s Tim Drake Robin, my only complaint is that they would have made the underside of the cape yellow. Now, when you do that, eh, you're going to see an extra cost, right, for the cape because they have to double stitch it. you got to put yellow on one side 
and black on the other. So that probably is the reason that they're not doing it, especially at the $10 price points. But most of all, the fact that we're getting this version of Nightwing, which I hope to see one day in the DC Comics multiverse lineup, right? That would be really cool. Pretty stoked. So we'll say two, three out of four ain't too shabby. Superman is the one that really doesn't do much for me. Moving on to Flashpoint, we will see Reverse Flash, which, hey, totally dig that. That looks pretty cool. Flash, Barry Allen, it looks okay. And then you're going to be getting Thomas Wayne, Batman. This version, these three, at this point, to be quite honest with you, I, I'm really kind of tired of Flashpoint. They have done it every single way. It doesn't look like Thomas Wayne comes with pistols. He's got the holsters, but no guns. Certainly doesn't look like he's got arms to fit it. Also, the renders. Now, these are renders, so maybe he's just a little bit short and squatty. But the scale looks really off. So, out of these, sure, reverse flash, Professor Zoom. Let's go with that. The rest of them, yeah, you know, it really doesn't do much for me. Now, as far as vehicles, the crowd actually went kind of gaga for this one. We're going to be getting the Whirly Bats coming out fall 2023. Total wackadoo contraption of a vehicle, but dang, that's pretty cool. I gotta give it to them. See, that, you can tell when they have fun with these. And the Superpowers lineup, the Batman 66 lineup, they're really having fun with them. And I'm having fun with them because oftentimes with DC Multiverse, I feel like the corners are cut. This is missing this. This is reuse. Yada, yada. With the Batman 66 and the Superpowers, even though we're seeing some repaints, uh, the price points ain't too shabby. But when you do vehicles like this, that's pretty darn cool. So I'm all in on the Whirly Bat. Look for that fall 2023. Now, like I said, this is right around the time where I had to duck out, right? Todd McFarlane, awesome guy. Sometimes, you know, he just likes to talk. That's his, that's his style, right? So sometimes the panel goes a little bit longer, and I had to make it over to the Marvel Legends panel, which I thought, hey, you know, only a couple minutes left. What, what, could, what could they show? Well, I'm going to tell you this honestly. They are going to be doing Batman the Animated Series once again. They're going to bring back the DC Direct lineup. They're going to reissue some older hard-to-find figures. And they're going to have a collect-to-build figure, as they're now calling it a build-a-figure, which is very marvelous. you got to differentiate it. But I think everyone at this point calls everything a build-a-figure. So Batman the Animated Series will be making a comeback quarter four, more towards fall into winter of 2023, which is pretty darn Awesome, I gotta say. So we'll be getting Batman, Robin, Scarecrow, like the one before the new Batman Adventures. There was three designs for Scarecrow throughout the Batman the Animated Series lineup into season four, but this is the second version of Scarecrow, and he's equally as terrifying. So that's very cool. I'm glad we're getting him. We're getting Mr. Freeze, which is totally cool. And then the 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 wackadoo whirly bat right sort of deal for the build a figure will be the condiment king so no complaints there i do have the batman but i'm happy to say i never got into dc direct so i'm happy to be getting into it now i'm totally on board for these that's going to be a new line of course i i've really stopped a lot i've been picking and choosing but it comes to batman the animated series i'm on board so really looking forward to this the fact they're doing Condiment King, totally wackadoo, but I absolutely love it. And they're also going to be reissuing the Bat Cycle along with Batman, the helmeted version, right, of Batman. It's got lights, everything, the whole shebang looks pretty cool. Looks like it's going to have the cloth cape, which is pretty nice. So I'm definitely looking forward to it. Now, I will say this. Because I missed the panel, I have been all over social media trying to find the owner of these please let me know if you took these photos so i can properly credit you down below i did not take these two photos so again if you know if it's you please contact me hit me up on instagram i'm happy to post and really give you the shout out that you deserve and thank you for taking such wonderful photos i absolutely appreciate it because yeah it, it would have been nice to kind of finalize all these panels but and they really did overlap them this year. So hopefully we don't have to deal with that ever again. Now, if you think that was it, right? Well, no, we got one more tease for you. Todd McFarlane revealed that they will be doing the Medieval Spawn 
Kickstarter. There's no other further details. This one is looking like a very cool looking medieval spawn. I think this is what people are expecting a lot more of in regards to the Target exclusive manga medieval spawn and they did the recent medieval spawn which i really wasn't a fan of either one of those so yeah this one is looking pretty cool my high hopes is that you can really pose them out and you could put them on the cool war horse i think that would be awesome in my mind this has got to be better than spawn series 20 that medieval spawn still holds up it's amazing yes it doesn't have as much articulation but if you can match that and really do it right I'm very interested in this Kickstarter. I'm excited to see how it goes. So again, more info on all of that to relay back to Batman the Animated Series. If these are your photos, please let me know so I can properly credit you from Superpowers to DC Multiverse to Batman 66 to all the other lines, anime, sports, and whatnot. That's your full wrap-up for San Diego Comic-Con 2023. Thanks to the folks at McFarland Toys for showing off all these great new figures. Thanks... For everyone who tunes in, and as always, you've heard my thoughts, but now I'm curious to know yours. Comment below, let me know. Let's talk everything McFarlane Toys. Just cross the board. Tell me what you like. So I'm going to leave you guys with that. As always, drink some great coffee, eat some great food, but most importantly, remember, look for some more of my wrap-ups, right? I'll get to a few of them, but for the most part, I've been running myself ragged. You know, it's not just toys. There's real life and everything else that you have to contend with. So I'm going to be resting, and when I do... Let me know what you found. I'll talk to you guys soon. Adios.